Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. I am, of course, Nick McDaniel, and this week I will not be joined uh, by our buddy Myron. Uh, you know, listen if you're if you're kind of if you're one of those uh, spiritual, faithful, whatever, throw some prayers out to our buddy. Uh, he's had a little bit of a health scare, so we. Uh, but I wanted to make sure you at least you had a show this week, uh, and we got that out. So that's kind of why I'm flying solo right now. Uh, but listen, let's keep it on the up and up. Uh, who knows? May, if we ever cut that video, we'd probably cut it over on our YouTube channel at youtube.com. Uh, just check us out, man. Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast, Tapped Out Podcast Network. You'll, you'll find us for sure. Uh, we're there. You can become a premium member, get the shows early, the bonus content, uh, you know, all that good stuff. But hey, even if you're just a regular, you know, YouTube subscriber, make sure you are subscribing. Make sure you got your notifications turned on. With all that extra stuff we've been putting out lately, man, we've been putting out and stuff for pop culture, some sports stuff, wrestling stuff. All that stuff's on the YouTube channel. By the way, if you're just an audio listener who catches us on the podcast versions, over on the YouTube channel, there's so much more content that comes out on the regular basis. Uh, but, hey, look, without further ado, um, it's going to be tough. You know, it's the, the, the single person. Uh, I'm not sure I'll get an hour out because we won't have the back and forth that we typically have. Uh, it'll just be me. Uh, but I did want to address a few things. Uh, but before I do, I want to make sure I address uh, you know the sponsors of the show this week. And of course, as always, we are joined by our sponsors over Athletic Greens. You're going to need a smaller cabinet because now you can take all those supplements you're taking or not taking and replace them with this. AG1 by Athletic Greens brings 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens together in one place. It might just be the most comprehensive and convenient nutritional regimen on the planet. Immunity supporting, recovery enhancing, digestion improving, energy lifting, made to the strictest quality standards. Made New Zealand. Made for just about everybody. That's right. If you're looking to live a healthier life, check out our friends over at Athletic Greens. Uh, athleticgreens.com backslash emerging is the actual code there uh, to check it out. It, uh, it's an easy way to get all that stuff kind of compounded into one drink early in the morning. Uh, and look, it's it's uh, endorsed by lots and taught lots of people. Mick Foley's a big fan of it. Many, many more. Uh, but hey, let's check and dive right into some stuff I wanted to get into. Uh, let's first and foremost, what happened this past weekend? So, uh, Myron and I made the trip. We headed on up to Canton, Georgia. You know, it was the Southern Honor 46 show right there in Canton, Georgia at the Action Building. Uh, drew around, they look, they're over 307. And, you know, let, let, let me start here because this is something I wanted to get into. Um, I asked uh, some people that were there, I said, listen, Gary and them are good. You know, 300 is a good number, you know, but we've, we've heard some numbers. Uh, even from this past weekend specifically, and I'm not, look, this isn't a, a crap on those promotions. That's by any means. And I'll get there in a minute. Uh, looks like WrestleMerica was around 125, uh, Georgia premiere around 103. Uh, of course I just said 307, uh, for Southern honor, um, 220 roughly for viral. So, so here's my question. 220 for viral is good. Uh, 307 for Southern Honor is good, right? It's not great, but it's good. Uh, but then you see these other numbers. And my question I asked somebody over the weekend is, is Georgia indie wrestling in a slump? And it's not a slump in the sense of, like, I, I love the talent that's out there. There's a lot. There's The talent now is just as good as ever. I mean, you still have guys like, you know, Joe Black and Chip Day and Kyle Matthews. And, you know, listen, I could go on and on and on, right, about all the top-tier guys, the best wrestlers in the world, blah, blah, blah. That's not the question. I've never said is it a talent question. It's it, our promotions in a slump that we're just not drawing what we were. Um, and if so, why? Is it, you know, hey, it's the dreaded, is it the recession word? I mean, uh, you know, all those type of things. And I, it's something I'd love to hear some feedback on if people think just in general, um, uh, is wrestling not as cool as it once was? Uh, I mean, listen, even though the SmackDowns and the, I mean, AEW's in a slump and they can say they're not, but they are. And I, I can address that down the road. 
But uh, that's something I'd love to hear the answer to at Tapped Out Pod on social media, Tapped Out Pod at gmail.com if you email. Just something that's curiosity that I'm going to do, do some digging into over the next few weeks. Um, but anyway, Southern Honor uh, kicked off the show uh, they, in a fantastic fashion, by the way. Um, Southern Dishonor basically uh, attacked Gunner Miller. Uh, the Gunner Miller was set to be in a five way elimination match for, for the uh, championship uh, that was relinquished by Cruel. By the way, I'm going to share some thoughts on that uh, on Cruel in a minute. And um, so they es- essentially attack uh, Gunner Miller to uh, take him out of the hope, and the thoughts are to take him out of the match later in the show in the main event. Um, I'm assuming, right? Because then it gets it down. And it looked at that point, Carly Bravo was going to be the choice one. Uh, it was going to be Kyle Matthews, Gunnar Miller, Sunny Day, Sauronaro, and Carly Bravo. So, you, it, you know, Sonny and Sal are your tag team champions. So you would assume that, you know, the Southern Dishonor's choice would be Carly Bravo as the new Southern Honor champion. And this whole attack essentially was to take Gunner out. So it would be the three of them versus Kyle Matthews. Kyle Matthews is a phenomenal wrestler, but those three against one, the odds aren't in your favor, right? That's that's the logic. Um, so that sets the table. The emotion starts off high, but then, of course, you know we got we got Naja versus Owen Knight in part of their best of seven series. Owen Knight went on, and obviously, you know he listen. By the way, Owen Knight goes down to viral and captures. Owen Knight is your new viral pro wrestling champion. Like. That's a hell of a weekend for uh, Owen Knight, by the way. So, uh, kudos and congrats to Owen Knight, uh, who, you know, there, there was a, for the long time here in Georgia, there was a uh, saying like, uh, you know, stop sleeping on Owen Knight, right? Because it just seemed like everybody kept overlooking Owen Knight. And I think, uh, but when this best of seven series, him becoming the viral champion, uh, the stuff he's done in IWE and Southern Honor, I think those days of people sleeping on O at night have come and gone. Uh, I think everybody recognizes the uh, the talent that's there. Uh, speaking of talents, I want to talk about one in particular, uh, Cyrus, Cyrus the Destroyer. Um, it's funny because we we we're, we're getting into this wrestling season where everybody's talking about awards. Pick an award, it doesn't matter, right? Pick a company, pick a promotion, pick a podcast. Everybody's got their own awards in it, so it whatever it is. Um, and by the way, I, for the record, I always say, and I've said this, I've had the same stance on awards, uh, you know, for years. If they mattered to you on January 1st, they should matter to you on December 31st. If they didn't on January 1st, they shouldn't matter on December 31st. Um, so that take that for whatever it is. Um, but my point was Cyrus the Destroyer is an absolute road warrior. Dude's been in Japan. Like, Cyrus's best work, because somebody asked me, like, oh, would he be your wrestler of the year in Georgia? And I'm like, the answer to that is no, and not because I don't think he's the best wrestler, you know, or anything. Like, he's not got, like, he's not done outstanding things. His best work's not even in the country, much less in the state. So, I mean, he's done great stuff here, but, I mean, he's doing bigger and better things you know, you know, overseas than he is here. So it's kind of hard to make that argument. Now, I'm not saying it's not a, it's not a, it's not a good argument. I could make it, but some people would argue that his best works overseas, which leads me to my point of who is the best wrestler in Georgia. Um, look, the, you know, how it ended the year doesn't matter. When you take the body of work over the past year, I think cruel would have to be, you know, Bet wrestler of the year, outstanding wrestler of the year, MVP, pick a name, pick an award, doesn't really, you know, matter. I think at the end of the day, nobody did more. And look, is it, I'm not going, like, it's not even up for debate. Because there are, there are guys that you could sit there and make a debate for. Uh, I'm just telling you my choice. And listen, it's my podcast. I get to share my opinion. And that's my thought. If you want to share your opinion, that's awesome. At tapped out pod, tapped out pod at gmail.com or start a podcast. Um, so any of those work, um, but, uh, you know, look, it's a unique time in Georgia. I was looking through and saw some, you know, cool things. Uh, strict nine who's been around forever in Georgia is the new Russell America champion and at Austin towers is rain. So that's, you know, that's a twist. And like I said, over the weekend, Georgia premier had their, uh, big show. Uh, Georgia premier is a, is something that I think is, uh, it's, it's a, it's a very family friendly show. Um, which is why you always hear about, you know, like there's lots of kids at that show. 
Um, and look, it's a gr- it's a great learning environment for a lot of those kids from Nightmare Factory. Uh, so if you're up in that Jasper area, check out their shows. Um, for sure, I think you know you won't, won't be disappointed uh, without a doubt. I think it's a good one. Uh, also, like I said, Southern Honor crushed it this weekend. Viral had an outstanding performance. You know, they I think Viral's big take was they got to the end of where they were going on a story, and I think that ultimately uh, was what they were looking to do, and they have finally gotten there. So kudos to them. Uh, but I did want to get into some of the questions. We did have some questions sent in. Usually Myron reads me these questions, and then we kind of go back and forth. So forgive me while I have to dig and look for them. Uh, so let's see. First, let's start with uh, Terrell from Philly, Pennsylvania. So Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, basically, what are you guys' thoughts on the New Day capturing the NXT tag team titles? Um, well, listen, man. Um, some people are arguing like, oh, it was just meant to be to break a record. Uh, cause now I think Kofi's a 15 time tag team champion, uh, breaks the record of, uh, Booker T and I can't remember the other one. Uh, but it also, you know, was it so they could just become a triple crown winner. So now they have, they've held all three. Um, was it the pump, the ratings over on NXT? Uh, who knows? Right. Uh, but he, look, my answer to that is, it's funny. Cause I actually joked with somebody and said, who gives a shit? Right. Like, I mean, it's cool if you ask me. I mean, I think it is cool uh, that, that look. We talked about more guys going down to NXT from, and I would have never guessed it to be somebody like the New Day. Uh, you know, Apollo Cruz made sense. Uh, Dolph Ziggler made sense even to me, uh, and they've done a few guys you know along the way. Uh, even like, listen, Mandy Rose has revitalized her career by going back down there, but I would have never ever thought somebody like the New Day would have dipped back down. So uh, that's a cool surprise. I I don't know will it do, will it help ratings? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, it could um, I'd love to know again what your thoughts are? Do you think it'll boost their ratings? Um, but I think it. I tell you what, it will do. It will surely help because look, we always have a saying about wrestlers only get better when they wrestle people better than them, right? I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. Um, when it comes to tag team wrestling in the WWE. Um, if your name's not Jimmy and Jay Uso, do you get any better than the New Day? Like right now, I don't know. I mean, that's a damn good question. So uh, I could make the argument for that. That's the the best learning uh, opportunity some of these young talents are going to get. Um, so that's my thoughts. Again, share your thoughts, tappedoutpod at gmail.com or at tappedoutpod on social media. Uh, let's keep it moving and we'll go to the next one. Philip from Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, love South Carolina and the Carolinas in general, man. Got a lot of, a lot of peeps up there. Uh, what were your thoughts on the ring of honor final battle? Um, first I asked it. So I see they're bringing back, uh, the battle, uh, what is it called? The honor club. Um, my question was why I couldn't figure out why they were even bringing it back. Um, but they are. So, uh, kudos, um, the, the, the show itself, by the way, was a pretty good show. Um, it was funny. We had a conversation, a, we had a political conversation and it turned into a, a complete sidebar. So like somebody was asking me about just, uh, look, I'll go down this rabbit hole. I don't do politics much and I'm not picking a side here. The question was, uh, we were comparing candidates to wrestling promotions about how like, an electable candidate needs to be somebody like John Cena or, you know, the rock where the masses love them. Not particular like, Oh, well the most passionate fans might be behind a small candidate, but therefore they may not vote them in because it's such a small number who are, who, you know, the vocal minority kind of like wrestling. And I compared a specific candidate to like ring of honor, which was kind of funny. Uh, and I won't get into that. Uh, we don't, we don't do politics in specific. So, um, but like I said, the show was fine battle, uh, the, uh, final battle. Uh, but here's the thing, man, it's a niche inside of a niche at this point. And, um, I- I'm not really sure without TV, like what's the life expectancy of this ring of honor project. Um, I don't know that, uh, I mean, is, is he going to set up a streaming service and then just run TV on there? Like, are they going to film think of, you could film matches at dark 
or something when you're filming dark and just plug them onto uh, the Honor Club, I guess, and make a weekly show, um, which it wouldn't be terrible. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a bad idea in the least. Um, I thought Jericho as their champion gave them, you know, a little bit of a a bump, a little credibility, that type of thing. So them him not being the champion anymore, I don't really particularly know that. Um, uh, I don't know Claudio because here's look. Uh, I know there was some backlash that Conan recently made a comment about Claudio, uh, basically saying he has no charisma. And it's kind of true. Um, again, wrestling fans like Cesaro slash Claudio. The masses as a whole, he's not super captivating. Doesn't mean I don't enjoy his his work and his wrestling. I I just I understand what. Here's the problem. I think we always take offense to things, even whether it's a it's subjective. Uh, and two, if it's even right, we just it's not what we want to hear. And I think that's the case in Claudio's uh, scenario. Um, but anyway, back to my point of, like I said, without TV, I'm not really sure where Ring of Honor... Is Ring of Honor a wasted project without an actual TV deal? Uh, whether it's, do they give Ring of Honor the Rampage slot? Or, um, because it's, I don't know that streaming services alone uh, kind of get you there. Um, but that's just my take. Um, but... There, lots of stuff came out of Ring of Honor show, uh, new champions and all that kind of stuff, which I want to address one of those in a later question, by the way. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's just keep it rolling. Scott from Sioux City, Iowa. By the way, thanks to Iowa, man, big, big, list, big bump in leader, uh, listening, lit, viewership and listens last week out of there. Uh, what do you guys think of Sasha apparently heading to New Japan? Good for her. Uh, I know this is weird. Um, A, by the way, everybody's just under the natural assumption. I, by the way, I don't agree with what I'm about to say. I don't believe what I'm about to say. It was just something that I, I thought of. They did agree for Carl Anderson to work that show. Would we be stunned if the WWE was allowing Sasha to go to work there? Uh, because everybody knows without fail, they could freeze her contract at this point. And she's she would not be going anywhere. So if she if she's leaving the company, that means they have chosen not to freeze her contract, and they are going to allow her to leave. Which, um, by the way, you know, uh, is that a bad thing? Right? I mean, I mean, that's kind of that's a cool co it's a cool move compared to you know to 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 the recent uh, histories of WWE not allowing that to happen. Um, now as far as Sasha Banks, you know, goes, I admire her for standing her ground. I really do. Even if I don't agree with her point, like I, 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 I don't necessarily a hundred percent agree with it. Uh, but I do think she should be paid more. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily think that. Um, but I do. And I'll tell you why. Um, because I do believe she could be probably one of the most mainstream stars they have, um, with an album and acting and things like, I think she could become a, a, would she ever be the rock? No, but she could be like that type of uh, personality where she's actually getting out there into mainstream stuff. Uh, would she be, if, if they paid her the money she's asking for, would she be overpaid? Uh, it, that is so subjective at this point. Right. Uh, but cause it's funny cause I, I with the money WWE is making, I could make the argument that all of the wrestlers are underpaid. <laughs> yes, even the ones that you, everybody screams are underpaid or that are drastically overpaid, I could sit there and say if it's a percentages of revenue, they could they could deserve more. So, would you rather see more talent signed at lesser money, or more or less talent signed at more money? Yeah, that's what maybe maybe I said that right. Um, so I'm not, I'm not saying she deserves my money. Cause you know, I hate the term, especially in pro wrestling, like you deserve it or, you know, they deserve more, they deserve better booking. They deserve more money. Like, I, I don't know that that's got, I'm just saying like, if they, if they paid me people more money right now, I get it because of the money they're making. 
Um, so that's, you know. Uh, now, as far as, like, to follow up on this in a little bit of a different twist, as far as the AEW rumors go that, hey, if they let her leave, does she go to AEW? Uh, I'm not sure how big of an impact she makes, but if I'm Tony Khan, I make that move every day of the week. I don't even hesitate on it. I, I would completely jump on that take. Um, I, I, I Going back to the reasons that I just said, I think that she is a mainstream star. I think she is a mainstream talent, you know, type of personality. So I, for one, would definitely jump on that one in a heartbeat. So, uh, But speaking of people moving, uh, Jared from Leesburg, Virginia. Do you believe in the theory that FTR is being buried by the Bucks to keep them down? Uh, what? Uh, I appreciate the question, but I, I, I don't like... Literally, don't they? I mean, up until this past weekend, didn't they pretty much hold every title except for the AEW belts at that point? Um, right? Well, wait a minute. Would that make sense then? Because the Ring of Honor belts, I mean, some people would argue didn't matter. They're AAA titles, which don't mean anything in the United States. Maybe. Maybe they don't. Maybe maybe they are. Who knows? Um, look, they dropped attack the Ring of Honor belts back... Uh, and that's owned by TK, of course, now. Um, so, maybe? Did they only get them because the Briscoes were that little? Because everybody forgets when the Ring of Honor purchase happened, the Briscoes were in that funky place that everybody was worried that Warner, Discovery, whoever the hell owns that, you know, now, uh, would would not be inter- would not want the Briscoes around. So, maybe that's why they did it. And when that, once that all worked itself out, they put them back on them, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I mean, there are rumblings that, look, you know, we've seen Dax, you know. Dax, by the way, is not bashful on social media. He's, he'll put it out there in a heartbeat. And uh, he's, you know, a lot of people are grumbling like, hey, when their contracts are up, they're going back to WWE because Triple H is now in charge. By the way, has that become like the default, like, thing? Now it's just like, oh, but they're going back since Triple H is in charge. They're going back since Triple H is in charge. Um, probably so, though. Could be true. Uh, I guess, but the true sign would be if they started dropping like all of their belts because you know they're not going to get to take those belts back to WWE. So if you start seeing them dropping all of their titles, probably a good sign to put stock in the fact that they probably could be heading back to uh, to WWE completely. So yeah, so I could see that for sure. I could 100% see them going back because listen, Triple H is a little more of a fan of tag team wrestling i mean you got the usos and how i mean listen how cool would it be that if uh that's the feud right the usos come in or uh, they get a feud with ftr ftr is ftr the team that beats the usos and takes that tag that ends that long tag team reign because then you could get ftr you get the new day you got the usos i mean and on and on and on start building some of the tag team division back up and uh like I said, Triple H is probably more a fan of it than uh, Vince was for sure. So, anyway, speaking of Vince and TK and all that good stuff, uh, let's see. Clint from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Is it a fair... Co- okay, that's a joke. Clint from Hershey is a Bruce Pritchard thing, so that's a joke. Uh, but somebody did send in the question, so I'll answer. Is it a fair comparison that people are saying Tony Khan is a lot like Vince and uh, that in keeping Regal off TV until 2024? Um, It's a complicated answer. But kind of, yeah, it's a fair, I think it's a fair shot to take. Um, Look, I thought Vince was fair in the 90-day clauses. I understand why. Uh, You don't want to put all the stock into somebody and they're super hot on your product and then boom, the next week they're on somebody else's TV, right? So I understood that part. Um, Is the year excessive? Uh, I would argue probably. Uh, now, I think he did. I think he did William Regal a solid. If you heard his interview, I think Tony Khan did him a solid by letting him go because I think they had a they had an option, I believe, for the to add on, like to extend for a year. So by them just agreeing not to, I think that was a you know a favor to, to William Regal. Um, so this, like I said, this is why this one to me is a little more complex. Because you could argue if you're if you're not going to extend him, let him work a ninety day clause or whatever it is, and then let him out, you know, let him go. Um, 
but to say he couldn't do TV for a year, like an entire year plus to 2024, um, you could argue it's ex- excessive, and I wouldn't completely disagree with you. So, what 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 would what are your thoughts? Would you would you go with that route? Would you say that's excessive? Would you or, or you know let us know at tapped out pod or tapped out pod at gmail dot com. What's your uh, thoughts on that? Um, because that that one's a, that is a deep dive that I would really love to hear some more people's takes on. Because on one hand, I don't have a problem with the clause, but the year does seem a little steep in my opinion. Huh. Anyway, um, uh, let's talk a little bit about some other things. But I want to remind you guys to make sure. You are subscribing over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com. Check us out, Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast, Tapped Out Podcast Network. Lots of cool stuff over there. Make sure you are liking, make sure you're subscribing, turn your notifications on. Hell, even become a member, sign up behind the paywall, get stuff early, get it, you know, the extras that we're doing on there. Uh, but look, we know a lot of you guys are, you know, big podcast listeners. You listen to us on you know Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartMedia, Amazon Music, and pretty much everywhere there is a podcast platform. We appreciate that as well. Make sure you're subscribing and turning on, you know, all that good stuff. And then of course, man, that five star rating review is greatly, greatly appreciated if you feel so inclined. Um uh, I know this week's episode is going to be a little shorter than most. Uh, me flying solo, we don't have that back and forth with Myron. Uh, we do hope Myron's you know doing okay. Hopefully he'll be back, spouts back, and he'll be back next week. Um, but I think I want to do some uh, cool stuff. I know we're getting into the the meat of the holidays. I want to do some things, uh, some like extra bonus type episodes. Uh, but like I said, it's a lot of that stuff on our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm actually going to release. Um, so, friend of the show, MB Mooney, by the way, this is something I wanted to bring up before we got out of here today. Uh, friend of the show, he does reviews on our YouTube channel. He's done Willow, uh, Wakanda Forever, Black Adam. Sorry, I'm thinking. I'm going through my head. Uh, but he's got a Star Wars uh, video that he did. He's ranking the uh, Star Wars movies. Uh, and I'm actually going to release you know that stuff. But uh, what, the reason I'm bringing him up is he did sign a contract, a legit public. He's going to be a published author. Uh, he's, he's written one book, self-published. Now he's going to get a traditional publish publishing deal. So, uh, check him out, man. Check out the book. Uh, make sure you're subscribing on our YouTube channel. Cause like I said, we have an official, like pup, he's going to be a published author doing content for the, th- uh, you know, content for the channel. Uh, we're collaborating with him, with his YouTube channel. Uh, also don't forget we collaborate with Lewis, uh, from the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. He does uh, some impact work for us. So just more and more of that type of, uh, you know, work's going to be coming over on the next, you know, few months, as, you know, hopefully, especially into the new year. Uh, like I, so hung out at the Southern Honor Show after the show was over, talking to some, uh, talking to some of the talents and, you know, like, man, this is a podcast. Like, you know, new ideas and stuff like that, but you got to make sure you're subscribing especially preferably on the YouTube channel uh, because that's where a lot of that stuff's going to go. The traditional podcast will be on the main show. Um, Lots of cool stuff. And I, again, I apologize. It's a short episode, uh, but we were, I was hoping that Myron would bounce back and be ready to go, but uh, it did not happen. So uh, we will definitely, uh, I'll try to get you some more content throughout the week on some other topics as they arise. But until that time, man, uh, well, I've got nothing else. So it's time to tap out.